this particular Samcraft workshop has always been 100% off grid. I have had a solar array system, battery banks, inverters, always in this building. In today's video, I'm going to be removing my original system and really upgrading it to a brand new, very cool, very powerful system from Blue Eddy. Hey everyone, Sam here and welcome back to Samcraft. In today's video, I'm going to be taking apart, removing my old system and installing a brand new one using the Blue Eddy AC500B300S Combo Power Pack Unit. Near the end of this video, you're going to see me put this unit through a torture test as well as I can here in my shop. I'm going to see if this unit will run absolutely everything in my shop, not just lights, TV, and a tool or two at a time, but every single one of my large benchtop tools, dust collector, table saw, TV, lights, battery chargers, and even a desktop computer. So let's go ahead and jump back in time and tear out that old system so we can put this new one in its place. Here's a look at my current power system, solar panel, battery bank, inverter, charge controller, AC load sitter, everything. This is the complete power station of my workshop. I've got a handful of components here and I'll briefly go over them just so you can kind of see what I've got, what I've been using, and then also be able to appreciate what this new upgraded system is going to replace. Outside of my workshop, I have eight solar panels set up on a wooden DIY rack that I built about a year ago now. It is not a perfect, wonderful, ideal situation, but it's something that's worked, has been stable, and has been good enough up to this point. Those solar panels bring in power from these wires, these are six gauge copper, into this grow watt charge controller. What this then does is controls the charge coming from solar panels into my battery bank. The battery bank consists of eight sealed lead acid AGM batteries. They are deep cycle and they are hooked up in a four series two parallel configuration, which gives me a 48 volt battery bank system. From there, the batteries go through a breaker disconnect box. This is an easy place to cut power from the batteries. From the breaker box, the power then flows over and into this black unit, which is a Midnight Solar brand DIY series all-in-one inverter charge controller. You may be wondering why I'm not using the charge controller function from the Midnight Solar Box and why I have the GrowWatt. That is because my solar panel array pushes out more amperage than this black unit can handle. I had to add on the GrowWatt to allow me to really maximize the amount of electricity coming in, the high amperage charge coming in, and really take advantage of as much sun as we get for charging the batteries. Inside this box is a 3500 watt pure sine wave inverter that feeds directly over and into an AC load center panel or commonly called a breaker box. In here, I have a dual pole 50 amp breaker set as a disconnect and then I have two outlets, one 15 amp outlet and one 30 amp outlet. You'll notice that the 30 amp outlet is off. It's because that actually goes to an RV plug that is on the other side of my workshop Whenever I put this whole system into place, we were living in our camper out here on our property because our home was not finished. And this whole system allowed us to power our camper. So that's why the 30 amp is there. Thankfully, we are in our home now, so we don't need it. And that's why the 30 amp is off. Otherwise, you see one 15 amp breaker circuit, and that is what powers everything in my shop. Right now, I have it going from this panel to one single outlet down here. And then from there, I use extension cords for my lights my lasers and everything of the sort. So as you can see, this is a pretty large setup. It does take up a lot of amount of room, has a lot of wall space. There's a lot of components, a lot of wires. The batteries themselves are really, really heavy and they take up a lot of space. You can also tell that it's loud. <laughs> this fan will kick on in my videos, even when I'm on the other end of the shop and I will hear it and I'll have to stop and wait for it to quit or just bear through it. It's one of those things though, it's not something I can turn off because it's charging, it's getting hot, and it needs to cool off so it doesn't catch on fire or break itself. But it's just one of the things that gets mm, a little bit annoying as I try and work and do videos in here. So my goal with this is to remove everything you see. I will leave my incoming wires from solar. I will reuse my AC load center, although it's gonna get taken down for now. But otherwise, grow watt charge controller, midnight solar inverter charge controller, eight lead acid batteries, all the wires, breakers, they're going away. So let's go ahead and start working. Let's go ahead and disconnect all of this stuff safely, get it out of the shop, and then 
honestly, we'll start insulating the walls and doing some prep work while we have access to everything as well. All right guys, here's a look at what I'm gonna be using for my new power supply for the workshop. This is a Blue Eddy AC500 and B300S battery inverter power station. This is a modular power station. that allows you to add on one to six of these batteries and connect up to about 18 kilowatts of battery power. So up here at the top, we have the AC500. This is basically the user interface portion. You have your charge controller, your solar charge and AC charge controllers, you have your AC electrical inverter, your DC power output, your readout displays, and all of your ports for connecting up, whether it be AC circuitry, DC, USB, or a mix of all of them. Down here below is the B300S battery. This is just a battery unit and it is external to the unit and you need the battery to go with the AC500 together to complete the system. This battery is a 3072 watt hour battery, which means it will provide 3072 watts for one hour before it's dead. It simply plugs up to the AC500 using that big thick cord over there on the right that has EV charging style adapters. That is not only your positive negative connections for your DC power, but it also includes BMS communication ports so that this unit knows exactly how to charge and control everything of all the cells within this box. It is more than just a charge cable. It is an all-in-one communication and charge cable together. Looking here on the front, we're able to see there's a lot of different options. We have some DC outputs, 12 volt, 30 amp, 24 volt, 10 amp. Over here to the right are our standard USB options. We have two USB-C 100 watt power delivery ports. Then we have a USB-A 18 watt and USB-A 5 volt, 3 amp as far as options as well. Coming down here to our AC output options, we have three 120 volt, 20 amp circuits, regular household plug style circuits. And then we have the three special plugs that really make this unit different in the market. We have a 30 amp four prong connector. This is only 120 volts though. Over here in the middle is the more common popular one. This is a 30 amp RV style connector. This is a 120 volt 30 amp RV style outlet. And then here on the right, this is what really makes this product unique. It actually has a 50 amp 120 volt outlet for RVs, large RVs or large building capacities. For the immediate uses here in my workshop, I'm just gonna plug into these three 20 amp outlets. That'll be giving me quick, easy power changeover and just be able to continue running everything as is. I do have a sub panel. I'm gonna wire up in the building, have outlets and switches. And at that point, I'm probably going to wire into this 50 amp outlet. I'll have my sub panel, a really thick, long 50 amp cord coming out of it and just plug into this. That way I will have a more traditional electrical system here inside my workshop. I'll be able to take that 50 amps of potential break it into a load center, different circuitries, and manage it better from there. These units are primarily targeted to people for camping or emergency use, power outage type scenarios, and I'm gonna be using it pretty differently. However, this is gonna be the backbone and keystone of my off-grid workshop. I have a solar array out front of my workshop that brings me DC power into the building, and this unit will be able to control it charge the battery or push it on through to my electrical devices as need be. In general, my electricity usage in my shop is pretty low. I have lights, computer, and lasers and stuff like that. Any of my large tools that I would use are not gonna be power hungry hogs except for that's Shea Poco CNC. As you guys can see, this is not a very tiny unit. It is approximately two feet tall, 20 inches wide, and one foot deep. However, you gotta take into account that big power cord that connects the battery to the unit. So really, you're looking at maybe more of a two and a half to three foot wide area for the wire to run. It is also not very lightweight. Together, I believe this is over 100 pounds, if not a little bit more. It is not something you want to tote around. You're not gonna carry this to 
camping in a tent or whatever but here in my workshop it's going to be a stationary setup anyway and that's fine as far as my workshop setup i think i've picked the area of my workshop i want to put this on and actually i'm going to mount this thing on a wall shelf it's going to have to be a very sturdy wall shelf it's going to be something i build myself but that's okay that's what we're here for so let's go ahead and build the beef and shelf of power so before I get rid of it, I want to show you guys what I've been using for my power after I took out the big battery system and solar system that you guys saw in the beginning of the video. I haven't just immediately jumped to this point in time. So I've been running off of a Blue Eddy AC200P portable power station. This one is um, smaller, so it has a smaller battery and it also puts out fewer watts of power. I've not really run into major issues with the wattage output, but the smaller battery has been a hurdle for me, especially as we get into the late fall, early winter. We have a lot more cloudy days. The actual sun time is shorter because the sun here in the northern hemisphere is down across the equator. And it just means that this doesn't get charged as much or have the capacity to hold as much as I need to to run through those cloudy days. I did a review video on this on our family YouTube channel. I'll put a link to that one down below. And my friend Seth also did a very modern, recent review of this unit on his channel. And I'll put a link to that one down below as well. They're both pretty cool if you want to see more in-depth information about this unit. The one linked on my family channel is going to be more of a how we used it in our home. Whereas Seth's video is a much more capacity test, true nitty gritty test, putting it through all of its paces. Even though I have the walls of my workshop sheathed with 7 16 inch OSB, I don't consider that strong enough to attach any kind of shelf brackets to and not have a concern that they might just blow through, especially with the heavy weight of the power station that I'm about to put on it. So instead what I'm going to do is put this sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood. It is going to span two wall studs. I'm going to attach it through the plywood, through the OSB, and into the wall studs. And this will be the backer board that I feel is strong enough to attach wall shelves to for all of this to go on top of. A little bit overboard? Yeah, you betcha. Even though there are 16 screws holding this thing in place, as I put in the very last one, I could still see it pulling the plywood up flush and making a really tight joint between the plywood, OSB, and the wall stud behind it. So in that case, no. I don't think it's overkill. I don't think for something like this there's a possibility of too much overkill because of how expensive the device is, how heavy it is, and how much I really don't want it to ever go anywhere. So, in that sense, let's not get cheap over screws. Let's just dabble it up, pepper it, and make sure it really does not go anywhere. All right, let's see if this shelf will hold the Blue Eddy. It's not lightweight. The AC500 is 66 pounds and the battery is 80 pounds. So 146 pounds is about to hit this shelf like no tomorrow. Let's grab it and go. What's the point of having this table that automatically lifts and lowers unless I use it for such an application? This is going to be very handy. It at least gets me most of the way there. I'm going to go ahead and put the battery on first and then I'll lift the AC500 and put it on top. Pretty straightforward, right? Yeah. Let's get it done.
All right, I can hear you guys. Sam, you're short. You can't actually reach the buttons. Well, I can. All right, Sam, well, you can't see the screen. I can see the screen pretty good. But the cool thing about this is Blue Eddy has a mobile app. So here on my phone, I'm gonna go ahead and launch the app. You can choose to log in or you can just do a direct Bluetooth connection. I'm just gonna click on connect at the bottom. It's searching, it's already found the device. So I'll tap it here from the list. And there we go. Here I can see that I have one unit. It is pumping out power, 520 watts of power through AC. Very, very cool. I can see I'm not pushing out any power through DC. Likewise, I'm not bringing in any power from PV or solar array or grid power, which would be plugged up to the wall. The really cool thing with this is not only that I can see battery percentage, I can see incoming and outgoing power, but these buttons down here at the bottom allow me to remotely turn on and off the DC and AC circuits. That's perfect. It'll allow me to turn the lights off and everything when I leave, but leave the unit on to charge in the mornings or during the day or when I'm just not in my workshop. We'll do a little demonstration here. I'll tap on the DC button. It's turning the DC circuits on. Not much happens in the shop because I don't have any DC things plugged in. We'll go ahead and turn that back off. Then what I will do is actually turn the AC circuits off. It's gonna kill power to my workshop, but it'll at least show you guys in real time how long it takes from hitting the button to turning the lights off. So I'm gonna hit the button in three, two, one, hit. That was uh, pretty quick. So I will turn the button back on in three, two, one, on. Wah! Let the camera adjust there and see that that was really quick. That's really good response time from a Bluetooth app. There's also the ability to connect this through Wi-Fi if you rather do that, which I will do, because it'll be great to be able to monitor my incoming outgoing power source and usage while I'm not in my workshop. If I'm in my house or somewhere else, I'm curious, hey, I wonder how much solar we're bringing in today. I can load it, look, and see. That's really cool. I had a surge protector laying around and I decided that that would be the best use of it in this case. It'll allow me to plug things in and out, move things around, and not to cause so much wear and tear on the actual outlets of the AC500. All right, my next step is to connect up my solar panels to the unit. For this, there's a cord that's included. It is a threaded little adapter here. This screws into the side of the AC500 up here and it controls your charging of the batteries. And on the other end of the cord are four MC4 connectors. This allows you to connect two different solar array or PV arrays to the system, which is pretty nice. I only have one, so I'm only gonna be using one set of MC4 connectors. I just connected up the solar panels and I can see on the display up there that I have some charging coming in, but I can also check the app. Tapping on the PV array icon here allows me to look even closer. I see that I'm only using DC1, not DC2 with the inputs. I'm bringing in 177 watts of power at 120 volts. Very cool. Now that 177 watts of input is really nice, although I have 750 watts of panels connected. But it's an overcast and cloudy day outside, so really, this is kind of the way it goes with solar. While this workshop is 100% off-grid and everything is run from batteries, there are instances where I have to plug this up to the grid through our home because I just have to work and do some things. For that, this unit also allows AC input. I'm gonna go ahead and connect my extension cord to the unit and then do some setting changes so that it doesn't pop my breaker. This extension cord that runs from my home is extremely long at about 200 feet. It is a heavy duty cord that runs in, but it's only connected to a 15 amp outlet at our home. The cool thing about the Blue is that it allows me to go into the settings and control how much charging it actually pulls from the grid to pump into the batteries. This allows me to really scale it back Treat it more as a trickle charger of sorts and not run the risk of overloading circuits, popping breakers, or causing issues down the line. I 
I just mounted a backer board onto the wall because I'm going to be installing a residential load center or breaker box to the wall to act as my electrical dispersion for the workshop. You can do whatever you want to, but I always like to get one that is labeled as a main lug connection center. What that means is it's going to have a spot for a main breaker where you can flip it and disconnect all of this. I always like to do that, but again, do what you like. You may also be forced to just do what you can find because selections are definitely limited as well. Here's a look at it. It's basically a metal box that breakers go into. So I'll take this front panel off, find a spot and mount it up there on the board where it is accessible to still have wires running in and out of it, but doesn't just dominate and take up too much space. So I decided to take some time, mount my load center here on the wall, and actually wire up four separate circuits so that I'm able to use the tools in the workshop with the Blue Eddy, but also do a really, really hardcore power draw test. This unit is supposed to push out 5,000 watts continuous with an 8,000 watt peak. I decided, you know what, my only way I can do this is to tap into that 50 amp outlet wire up a panel, give myself four dedicated 15 amp circuits, and really push it to the max. That being said, I think it's time to get my tools out, get everything as far as power hungry tools, get them close, at least set up drop cords some way, plug them up, turn them all on at once, and see how much power it draws, if the Blue Eddy can handle it, and for how long. How long could this unit run my entire workshop, every single tool? That's the question we're gonna to answer today. So I was working on preparing this to do my all-in-one tool test, but my wife, Angela, makes soap and she has her own building. And so I'm like, hey, wait a second. Why don't you connect your building to mine? Currently, she's been running an extension cord from the house to her building. I said, bring it over. So that's the green one here. Okay. So while I wait, because I know for sure I'll overload the system if I start plugging up my table saw, CNC, drill press, bandsaw, all that stuff at once, I'm going to continue what I was working on, which is hot gluing an air filter to the side of this unit so that it does not pull in any dust from my workshop. I don't want to close the fans off. They definitely need to run for cooling, but I do not want this thing sucking in dust from my shop and shortening the lifespan. So I'm going to spend some more time hot gluing it up there into place, kind of cutting it to fit both sides. And then whenever she's done using monster microwave of the apocalypse, I will then hopefully have my tools out and set up and cleaned up enough to show you the full tool running if the Blitty will run my entire workshop and how that goes. All right guys, I am ready to do my best power test I can do here in my shop. This place is a disaster, just so you know. So you're gonna see some serious messes, but it's kind of the way it is when you're doing kind of a major project such as this with electrical, plus setting up Laser Town. You guys are getting a little sneak peek by the way, and just trying to get my 12 by 20 shop set up. All right, I have my phone on screen record. We're launching the mobile app of Blue Yeti. It is on. It shows me we have 539 watts coming from the grid. It is run to the house, a little bit of top off charge. The current battery percentage is 48 and we have 595 watts going out right now. That 595 watts is for my 12 workshop lights. The TV, the desktop computer is also running. 
and there's a couple of battery chargers here and there. For this test, I'm going to fire up my bandsaw, my drill press, my small belt sander, my oscillating spindle sander, my dust collector, and then if we have room, I will fire up the table saw. That is probably the number one tool that you're probably wondering, will a battery power station run the high capacity draw for a table saw? Let's see, let's find out. Wow, awesome. That is really, really cool. I looked briefly at the spike on the app. You guys will have seen it real time. Uh, one time I looked was like 5,700 watts, which is awesome. It means it does go beyond the 5,000 like it's rated. And once everything got settled, I feel like I saw it around 36 and a half. So 3,650 watts. That is really, really cool. Now, every time I did turn on a tool, my lights did flicker for a second, but that never affected the TV or the desktop computer that's back there. So that is awesome. I wish I had more tools to test, but that's kind of all I can really do. Um, yeah, that's about everything I've owned. So that is an amazing, amazing test. I will never have all those tools running at once, never. So that is awesome that the Blue Eddy ran all of that. No problem, not a problem at all. That was absolutely amazing. It ran everything in the shop, everything I could pretty much throw at it. Sure, I could have some random tools here and there, try and just totally max it out. But honestly, if it's running all of those at once, that's great for me. I don't run all those at once for sure. No doubt the limiting capacity or limiting factor with this is the battery. Running everything at once, when it all settled around the 3600 watts, it would run it for less than an hour with only that 3000 watt hour battery. So definitely in this kind of situation, it would be great to get extra batteries, which is a perk of this unit. I can get up to six, hook it up to the inverter, and that will give me a total of more than 18,000 watt hours. That would be awesome. In the meantime though, this is an amazing upgrade. It is awesome. It is much smaller in footprint than what I started off with, has more power, and being lithium iron phosphate will last much, much longer than those lead acid batteries could ever hope to. Of course, that mobile app is also phenomenal. It's great for showing you guys real-time data, seeing the data, whether I'm here at home or abroad, and controlling the AC-DC circuits if I forget to turn my lights off whenever I'm done working in the shop. So all in all, this unit is absolutely workshop approved. It is workshop ready and it is going to be here for a long time running SamCraft. If you guys have any questions or comments about this, feel free to ask them down below. If you are interested in this unit, there's also a link to it down below as well. I have used this unit for many months before I ever brought it into my workshop. I've had this unit, it has worked flawlessly for me for months. I highly recommend it. If you're looking at this kind of brand stuff, honestly, it's hard to beat the Blue Eddy. I've seen many of its competitors and none of them really seem to hold a candle 
to this unit. So thank you for watching as always. If you got any questions, put them down below. Otherwise, take care, and I'll see you guys next time in the Off-Grid Samcraft Workshop.